Cleaning golf clubs might seem like it's super simple, but if you get this one thing wrong, you can damage your club and create a dangerous situation out there on the golf course. Today's video, I'm gonna show you how to properly clean your golf clubs to make sure that does not happen to you. There are a few things that you need to get in order to clean your golf clubs. A bucket with warm water. You do not want hot water. I'm gonna to touch on that a little bit later as to why you don't want hot, you want warm water. Some dish soap, doesn't matter what brand, and a scrubber brush. Now you're gonna want a scrubber brush with a nylon brush side. If you use a metal brush, it can damage the face of your golf club, the back of your golf club, the finish, and you don't want that to happen. So just get a stiff nylon bristle brush. It will work wonders. So what you're going to do obviously is put a little bit of soap into the bucket. It does not have to be that much. There you go, just a little bit of soap and uh, give it a swirl with your bristle brush. You know, that's gonna help work up those suds which you want for your clubs. Now, depending on how dirty your clubs are, you may want to let them soak, but this is where it gets real important, okay? This is where most people get it wrong. The club head is attached to the shaft via the hosel, which has glue in it. If you stick this and soak it in hot water, that water will work its way down into the glue and adhesive and damage the integrity of the glue and adhesive, which can result in the club head flying off after you hit a ball, damaging property, or even worse, damaging one of your playing partners or somebody else on the golf course. So do not, do not soak these clubs in hot water with water going over the hosel, okay? Use warm water, make sure that it stays on the metal part. You do not want it going over into the plastic section or above the plastic section where water can creep in, okay? Now, one other thing I wanna mention about irons when you're cleaning them, if you've got cavity back irons, you need to be very careful about soaking the iron because sometimes the design in the back of the club incorporates a sticker. I know that the uh, these are old clubs, but the Callaway Big Bertha irons had an actual sticker that went on the back portion of the iron. And if you soak that thing long enough in water, it would just pop right off. So I've only put enough water to cover that section in my bucket. Depending on how dirty the clubs are, you may have to let them soak for a little bit, really just one or two dips in some warm water. Then I take my brush, rub it in the warm water, tap it off, and then I just scrub the grooves out. That's all you have to do is just scrub those grooves out. And just make sure you give the underside and the backside a quick once over with the brush too. Make sure you got all the dirt off of that. You want good clean grooves because you want the club to impart spin on the ball. And how does it do that? The ball grips into those grooves and it rips the ball and puts backspin on it. So if you have dirty grooves, you're not going to get the backspin that you normally get if your grooves were nice and clean. So we've scrubbed it there. Just give it a nice little rinse. Then you're gonna use a dry, clean towel, okay? Guys, I know you say, but look, hey, I've got a towel on my golf bag. Don't use that. Why? You've got dirt, you've got grass, you've got sand already in that towel. You're putting it back into a clean club. Don't do it. Use a clean towel. But fellas, let me warn you, do not use your wife's Turkish bath towels, okay? I did that. I had to sleep outside for two weeks. It was January and it got cold. So now I don't use Turkish bath towels. I just use an old bath towel. It's wife approved. She said I could use it. I'm good. I don't have to worry about sleeping outside anymore. You wanna make sure that the club gets good and dry. And the big reason behind this is because, well, what does water do to metal? It creates rust. It creates corrosion. You want to make sure that your club is nice and dry so that you don't have any water sitting in the grooves, sitting in the under lettering or maybe the backside of the club. That's not good. That's gonna create pockets of rust. It's gonna damage your club. It's gonna reduce the life of your club. So make sure it's good and clean and dry and then set it to the side and continue. Now, moving on to woods, obviously uh, with all the designs that are out there today, you have to be very careful about making sure you get all the water off of the club head. You don't want any rust developing anywhere. Now, now of course, the club head material is gonna vary from driver to driver, or fairway wood to fairway wood, but basically you don't wanna let it soak too much. Just go ahead and give it a, a quick swish down there in the water. Take your brush and clean out what few grooves there are on the driver head. And then, of course, I go in the back and I just try to get all in these little grooves there. Now, there's one other tip that I'm going to share with you for the driver, but you gotta stick around till the end to see that. And that 
helps you by removing T marks and some minor sky marks on the club head. I'll show you what I used to get rid of that. So we've got the driver all cleaned up. It really goes fast, guys. It doesn't take too long. You're just gonna wipe it down, make sure you get it nice and dry. You don't want any water remaining on the driver. So there we go, nice and dry. I'm gonna let it sit out here in the sun a little bit just to make sure that all the remaining water gets off. Now, there's one club I never wash and it's my putter and here's why. The putter never really gets that dirty, number one. Number two, in a lot of putter designs, there are sharp angles and you don't want water to get back and sit in these sharp angles. If you ever look at some older used putters like blade style or mallet style that have sharp angles, you'll see little rust spots develop inside the very deep pits of those sharp angles. And you do not want that to happen to your nice expensive putter, okay? If you do wanna clean it, in some cases, I will use a dry nylon brush and scrape off any little dirt or dust that might have gotten up in there. Sometimes I've even go as far as using a Q-tip when I get really specific, but you don't want to introduce water into these really deep, sharp angles because that's gonna hurt your putter. So don't wash this, guys. Just give it a good scrub with a dry brush, wipe it off, and rock on. Now, for those of you that made it to the end, thank you so much for sticking around. You are gonna be privy to a special tip for cleaning the T marks and sky marks, some of the minor sky marks off of your driver. So what you're gonna do is get yourself one of these bad boys. It is a magic eraser sponge, okay? I let it soak in the soapy water for a few minutes. Now you wanna test a small area just to make sure that it does not impact the finish on your driver. I've used this time and time again on many different drivers and it never seems to have an impact, but with all the new materials and stuff that they're coming out with now, you gotta be careful. So take your sponge, it's gonna take some elbow grease, but you can really work the bottom of that driver and get those T marks off the bottom. Of course, you get white T marks sometimes, or if you use colored T's, you'll get T marks. This stuff works, it will remove those T marks. And then on the top of the driver, same thing, I plop it down on the towel and give it a good scrub, and it will remove some minor sky marks. Not all of them, not deep ones, but it will remove some minor sky marks. And there you have it, guys. There's your special tip for cleaning the driver. Use that magic sponge. Hope this video helped you out. If it did, hit that like button, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, keep on swinging.